All right. Um, welcome back. Uh, this is class. Um, I'm posting this. Uh, this is just a general discussion. This is information that will be included on uh, the quiz that will be due next week. So I'm expecting you to see it before next Thursday. Uh, so this material that we're going to be covering in this class uh, aligns with stuff that you were reading in the textbook. Uh, so that's good. What we're going to be talking about today uh, is the idea of teams. Um, now teams is something that uh, doesn't get a whole lot of coverage uh, in a lot of courses, but it, it's it's like, okay, I was required to do team projects. Like, yes. Why? Uh, one of the things that teams does uh, by working in a team, uh, I mean, you've probably heard like, oh, when you have when you have a team, you have different perspectives. It's all working together, uh, bringing those different perspectives. Like, yes, different perspectives are important because you don't have just a, a monocular vision of what needs to be done. Yes, that is important to bring in perspective, uh, people who disagree, people who who uh, have the ability to, to make changes to a design, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, but the reality is, <laughs> Yes, while perspective is important, uh, it's much more important in education than it probably is uh, out in the real world, where teams are valuable, uh, not because of perspective, but because of efficiency, okay? Um, if, let's say, I am, I'm hungry, okay? Uh, but so is everybody on my dorm floor. Uh, it's my responsibility to solve the I'm hungry thing. I'm going to go down by myself. I'm going to cook food. It's going to be fantastic. Okay. Uh, the decision to make food is entirely my decision. Um, and the amount of work required to prepare clean, uh, food hygiene, apply standards, uh, quality assurance, quality control, that's all on me. Everything is on me, and I have to take on a number of different roles, and I have to solve a number of different problems just to feed my whole dorm floor, okay? Uh, that's a lot of work, uh, and it's a lot of work that I would say is, uh, it's overwhelming for one person trying to feed a whole floor of people. So, uh, dorm floor feeding. Okay, so if it's, it's only my job, then there's a lot of things that need to be done. First of all, uh, in preparation, you have to have clean dishes, clean utensils, clean pots, clean pans, clean surfaces. Uh, your, your stove needs to be clean. Your refrigerator needs to be clean. Uh, so in preparation, you have to uh, purchase the food. Okay, so this is all uh, preparation. Okay, and the moment that we get done with preparation, you gotta go back out and buy more food. You gotta clean more dishes, uh, prepare for the next cycle. Okay, uh, then the next steps that are involved, the, the problems that have to be solved are, are you have to uh, decide what gets made. You may have all this food and you may say, well, no, tonight's spaghetti night. Uh, somebody has to make that decision. Now, hopefully this person and this person coordinate and they communicate and figure out what's going to be together and they buy the same, you know, foods, but whatever. <laughs> We're at spaghetti night. All we have is green beans. We're going to make green bean spaghetti. Blah. <laughs> So somebody has to decide what gets made, and then somebody has to prepare that food. Okay? Somebody has to actually cook it. So we have the preparation phase, we have the cooking phase, uh, and then we can go ahead and say we have the delivery phase too. In the delivery phase, uh, food is partitioned, 
or maybe you just have everybody come to a common pot and you stick your well no in covid era i guess you can't have that everybody has to have partitioned food um and then additional supplies have to be packaged together um utensils have to be provided additional i never know what the abbreviation for that is uh, this would include things like oh, are you gonna have milk for your drink are you gonna have um you know, packaged cookies or or are there are there other things that are going to be provided as a part of this meal uh, that didn't have to be cooked okay uh, and it's going to have to be brought from the kitchen to a place where people can consume it uh, especially for a dorm you don't want everybody with covid you know you don't want to have everybody walk through a place where you prepare food that's not exactly sanitary so we can we can lump this into three distinctive tasks and instead of having one person do all of this, we could instead have three people do this. Or we could have two people uh, simultaneously preparing food while somebody else is preparing the utensils, arranging the dishes, setting up the tables and chairs, uh, putting out the milk, putting out the cups, putting out uh, all of this. By diversifying what people are doing, we can be solving multiple tasks simultaneously. Uh, and that means you can have somebody out there buying food at the same time as food is being prepared, at the same time as the table's being set, and by the time this person returns, they're going to have food purchased for the next meal, which is great, means you're, you're ahead. Uh, the food is going to be ready for this meal, as is the food's going to be prepared and delivered to the table. Everybody gets to sit down and eat, and we already are ready for the next meal to begin this process. Okay? Rather than this meal gets over, this person then has to go out, clean the dishes, prepare, uh, find the food, purchase the food, decide what's going to get made, what all dishes are going to be prepared, cook it, then start the process again. This, this would be a, a day-long process. I have to start at the butt crack of dawn to start for breakfast. and oh, it, it could be done by one person. That's completely possible. But if you have three people, uh, then there's it's a much more efficient process. It takes less time. Uh, all three of these problems can be solved simultaneously. Uh, overall, the amount of problem solving is done because you get to specialize. Uh, when Henry Ford created the assembly line, the specialization process ultimately was what made it happen. Somebody had to be really good at welding certain joints together. That was it. They didn't need to know anything about rubber on tires. They didn't know, need to know anything about lug nuts. They didn't need to know anything about spark plugs. They needed to know how to weld. That's it. Your job is welding. Okay? Which means they also know how to do their own quality inspection. Uh, they also know how to, how to focus on this. It's not, okay, you're going to weld, but you also have to be really good at understanding wastewater and how water gets delivered away from sites. No, it's... it's it's one set of information where you are allowed to specialize, get really good at that one thing, and you can do the same task repetitively uh, very quickly. We took that idea of automation and we went ahead and uh, created a lot of machines that'll do it. If you have one task that's being done repeatedly, one welded bead, you can have a robot do that. Uh, that's, that's not too hard. And that saves the person the task of, of holding a, a heavy gun potentially getting burned, potentially getting fatigue in their eyes. Uh, instead, you can have a robot do it, and you can program the robot to do it so that it reduces the strain to the worker. Um, a lot of what automation is, is, is reducing strain. Um, now I know that, yes, people do lose their jobs in automation, but, uh, I mean, the mining industry, a lot of miners who went down and, and actually excavated coal were removed when you start bringing in heavy power equipment. The heavy power equipment was much safer. The machines were doing the work of people. They weren't, weren't actually exploding and having to go in these dusty mines. You could have a robot go down there and do it instead. Uh, automation is a double-edged sword because people lose jobs, but people overall have much better working conditions as a result. Uh, a lot of monotonous jobs are very harmful to your health. They're effective, they're efficient, 
but they're, but they're damaging. So, um, yeah, specialization is nice, leads to robots, um, huzzah. So when it comes to teams, the basic idea of why you want teams is every individual gets a specialized task. Okay. If you have somebody who's a manager of a project, it is their job to make sure that the project gets done on time. That's it. If you have somebody whose job is, is to understand manufacturing, it's their job to understand how to take a product from a prototype to a manufacturable product. Okay, That's it. That's all they do. That's all they need to do. That's all they need to focus on. How do you make the manufacturing processes work? Um, any Anytime we're now looking at these massive problems, for one person to solve every single problem in the cycle uh, is exorbitant. Imagine having, imagine if every day I had to build my own whiteboard markers using materials I gathered from the wild. I have to build my whiteboard markers, I have to build a whiteboard just so that I can get up here and teach. Imagine if I had to put together a camera just so I can live stream to you. Um, it, it becomes, if I were to try to solve all these problems myself, it becomes exorbitant. It's too much for me. Instead, I, I purchase the camera from a vendor. I purchase the whiteboard markers uh, from a vendor. Uh, I, I purchase the whiteboard from a vendor. I have somebody else who comes in and fixes the ventilation. I have somebody else who uh, makes sure the lights are all working so that I can focus on educating you uh, rather than focusing on these tertiary tasks. I am specialized as an educator because I work in this building. My job is to teach. My job is not to fix the HVAC system. My job is not to fix the hinges on the door. My job is not uh, to, to try to figure out why a drain is clogged. Uh, it's not my job uh, to, to go downstairs and take care of the plants that are, uh, that are out in the um, greenhouse. That's not my job. My job is to be a teacher. And I am supposed to do that job. My job is not to be the dean of the college. I'm a teacher. My job is not to be the president of the college. It's to be a teacher. And I have to focus on that role because my job ultimately depends on whether or not I'm transmitting the information to you, the student. Okay? So, diversification of roles. I mean, it's if you have can merge multiple roles together, you have an individual who is capable of doing that. Uh, that can be added value to the company. Um, but decoupling those roles can sometimes be challenging uh, when you try to fill those person's shoes. Uh, having distinct specialized tasks for every individual in the group uh, helps the group operate more effectively, more efficiently. One person is responsible for making sure that a problem gets solved. That's it. If there's a problem with that problem, you go to that person. If that problem, if that person cannot solve the problem correctly, you fire them and find a different person who can. That's, that's how it works. Okay, so every individual gets a specialized task. This allows for multiple problems to be solved simultaneously. Okay, the key word here is simultaneously. If I am teaching you as the student, somebody can simultaneously be fixing the hinge on my door. Somebody can be looking at the HVAC system. They don't need me present to do that. We can be operating at the same time solving the same problems. If they're waiting on me to finish teaching so that I can go look on the HVAC system, it introduces an inefficiency because not only now do I have to go find the HVAC system, I have to probably do some reading up on the HVAC system prior to getting there. Uh, I'm going to have to spend some amount of time uh, tinkering around with it, looking at it. Uh, somebody's going to be waiting for me to show up. Uh, it introduces inefficiencies. Specializing and focusing only on teaching allows me to be teaching while all the rest of those problems are being solved. And it doesn't require me to know everything. All I need to know is fine dining and breathing. Okay? Um, to quote SpongeBob. Uh, no, all I need to know how to do is teach. I need to know the material and I need to know how to express it to you. That's it. Everything else 
uh, can be solved by someone else at the same time as I am teaching. Uh, and that's how the university system works. It's the operation. We are all a team of individuals where everyone has roles. Okay? A team is healthy. When everyone has roles, that they can perform continuously. Here's another word. Why is continuously important? If everyone has roles that they can perform continuously, what that means is that nobody is standing around and waiting. Okay, if my job is, I'm, uh, let's say, uh, me and Ivana are uh, teachers. Okay, we're teaching this class together because Ivana is brilliant uh, and also a great cook. Uh, if Ivana and I are teaching this together, uh, then one of us will probably be teaching at the at a time. The other person may be working on homework, maybe dealing with different students, maybe dealing with a different class at the same time. Uh, but ultimately, we work together if we can both work at the same time. If only one of us can be teaching at a time or working on homework assignments, and so the other person is just waiting, uh, then that it produces an inefficiency where now there is a period where we cannot work if the other person is working. Uh, and that is unfortunate because now you don't have work being performed continuously, you have it being performed sporadically. And that does generate an unhealthy team. So yes, specialization is necessary. Everybody has to have uh, something that they bring to the table, uh, some way that they benefit the group, doing something that the rest of the group either can't do or, or won't be able to do as effectively. Or, or maybe the group has things that they would do better, uh, and this person fills a need in that group uh, that the rest of the group is not taken care of. Okay? Um, everyone is specialized to a task. All of these problems can be solved simultaneously. Having multiple people doesn't mean they all solve the same problem at the same time. It's not everybody like, hey, we're all gonna go out and buy food. Great, you don't need everybody to go out and buy food. And then you don't need everybody to show up in the kitchen and try to cook at the same time. If everybody on the dorm floor shows up and tries cooking, that's a nightmare. <laughs> uh, it doesn't help the food get prepared any faster and it's gonna make a mess. And people are going to get hurt. You're going to have th thrown elbows. Um, you can't have everybody solving these tasks simultaneously. You can have a couple people solving these tasks at the same time. You can have a couple people go to the store. You can have a couple people cooking. You can have a couple people delivering. You could do that, but you won't have everyone. You won't have everybody doing every task at the same time. Because then, um, you know, what happens if you go to purchase food... And the person who's purchasing food is vegan. And so the only thing they want to buy is, is vegan food. Well, the problem is the person they're ne sitting next to uh, is, uh, is carnivore. And they, they want meat pasta. Uh, they want meat juice. Um, like, don't even give me that, that orange juice stuff. I, I want meat juice. Like, drain a cow. I'll drink it. Uh, you know, what happens when both of those people go together? Well, they're going to have an argument about which food to purchase, which means it's going to take longer to purchase food. And when the food gets here, it's going to take longer for them to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we take what's been prepared, what was purchased? These, these people are both going to want to explain their reasoning, uh, having streamlining this process by saying okay one person is in charge of managing food delivery you're going to choose which foods get purchased you're going to choose which brands get purchased you're going to choose uh, what what's important here you have one person who's in charge of cleaning and making sure that the surfaces are clean uh, they're going to be the gordon ramsay who walks around and oh what are you doing you moron this should be a clean spoon um you're going to have one person who is doing that, and it's everybody else's job to just listen to them. You have one manager involved in making sure the process occurs. And that manager's job is nothing more than making sure that is. It doesn't, it's not the manager's job for management of cleanliness uh, to make sure that the food is delicious. It's not their job. Quite frankly, you can clean all the dishes all day long. It's not your job to make sure that... Uh, 
Jean-Claude back down there is, is making uh, really tasty bacon-wrapped omelets or, uh, or soy-wrapped something that's a replacement for an omelet for the vegan people. Um, it's not the person who's cleaning's job. And it's an inefficiency when they start meddling in other places. As long as you stick to your task, as long as all of those tasks can be formed continuously, <coughs> then the team is healthy. As long as everybody has something to do all the time, it's healthy. Okay? And as long as you're not repeating tasks. So this is a foundational part of problem solving. Teamwork is. Because it, it means that you can take a small problem that you know how to solve. Combine it with a small problem that somebody else knows how to solve. Combine in that with a small problem that somebody else knows how to solve. You merge these together and you get the Triforce. And you go out and you go fight Ganon with it. Okay? Um, it takes these small problems and these small solutions and it lumps them together. And here you have a situation where the sum is, gr is greater, no, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts you are able to solve a much larger problem than simply each of you working individually. Okay, now we are going to talk a little bit more about teams and roles next week. Uh, I did anticipate this being a two-week thing. Uh, we'll also talk about team contracts, uh, team health assessments, uh, those types of things next week. But it, your quiz this week will very much be based on the essence of why are teams necessary uh, for the problem solving process. Okay. Um, this is the last lecture I have for today. Uh, for those of you who are assigned the Tuesday class, I will see you in class today. For those of you who are assigned to the Thursday class, I'll see you in class then. For those of you who don't watch the videos until after class, I saw you or I didn't see you. And hopefully you figured out my cryptic messages. All right. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.